right, guys. Welcome again to another Friday Live. Glad to be here with you. We're going to have some fun today talking about rhythm changes. What is rhythm changes? Um, so rhythm changes is the harmony that covers a lot of different tunes. There's about, I know about three or four different melodies that go with the rhythm changes. Put my little towel here. So um, like the Flintstones, for example, do you guys know the Flintstones? Uh, well, first I should take some time to make sure everybody shows up, right? Um, so um, I'm going to ask you guys how, um, if, if you enjoyed last week's lesson, if you were able to check out those pentatonic patterns that we covered last week. Um, tell me if the sound is okay. Any comments about the, the image? I'm trying something new here today because look behind me. We're going to use the board for the first time. I'm going to be able to write chords for you here in my little board. So that's very exciting. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're making some improvements here in the channel. Thank you for your donations, guys. Uh, so, okay. Let's... I uh, uh, just want to make sure you guys are, are here with me, so I'm taking a moment. Um, we're going to talk about rhythm changes today. That's a harmony that covers many tunes, like the Flintstones, like I Got Rhythm. Like, I think it's Ornithology from... Uh, or, or is it not? From uh, Charlie Parker. Uh, there's a lot of little nice tunes, uh, Olio from Miles Davis, um, all those tunes are tunes that you can play uh, anywhere in the world with jazz musicians, they are standards, uh, and they all have just one harmony, and this harmony is like, almost like the mother of jazz, it's just like the blues, you know, this harmony is so important for you to be able to know and master, that just to study just this harmony is already um, a great study in itself, like um, a lot of times I sit down and I just go over a little creating little rhythm changes lines. So we're about to see what this is. Uh, yeah, Floriba Bengals, the board. We're going to use the board. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? All right. Um, I'm kind of getting away from the board here so I can use it later. Uh, big, big shadow of mine here on the board. That's kind of bad, but um, that's what we have for today, guys. Okay. So let's get started here, huh? Rhythm changes usually is played in the key of B flat, okay? So we're gonna have a B flat. Right here, tell me if the guitar sound. Coming good? All right, uh, maybe a bit closer. What, me come a bit closer? Me, a bit closer to the camera? Or bring the camera a bit closer to the, to, to help. Rodolfo, hey, what's up, Rodolfo? Uh, should I bring the camera closer to me? Is that what you're saying, Emerson? Let's get started here. All right. So rhythm changes, guys. We're going to be in the key of B flat. So first I'm going to write out the chords for you, all right? And let's analyze them as we talk about them. So guys, here's the harmony of rhythm changes. Uh, it starts, it's usually played in the key of B flat. And then we do a five of two. Who's the five of two, guys? That's C minor. Sorry, the, the two is C minor. The five of two is G7. Let's put a flat nine in there uh, just to indicate that it's going to be a Phrygian dominant or any t dominant of some sort that has the flat nine, like the altered uh, chord, for example, or just the Phrygian dominant. Can that be seen OK? Uh, and then we have C minor and F7. Yeah. Then once you do this uh, twice, it's like A, A, B, A. Here's the B, uh, like... Here's the, the next part. You do two, five, one to four. So who's the four in B flat? That's E flat, right? So two, five, one to E flat is F minor. So yeah, two, five, one to E flat and then E diminished. 
Can you guys see this? I hope you can see this at home. Uh, ooh, rhythm changes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then we just repeat again. But this, this last time, I personally hear it like this. I just go, one. Uh, yeah. Uh, you have to finish it in B flat, so it's not the same. You know, you have to finish it. You have to get to the end there in B flat. So usually here, at just a two five is fine. We'll do. All right, and then the B part. I'm not gonna write it. Uh, just go to the third degree, which is in this case the, the note D, and then uh, do a chain of dominant chords going in fourths. So D dominant, G dominant, C dominant, and F dominant. And you can treat them all mixolydian. Or if you want to go a degree uh, further on, on the second degree dominant, which would be C dominant, you can always use the Lydian dominant. And on the, on, when you get to the G dominant, you can always be using the Phrygian dominant. Are you guys following me here? All right, guys, uh, so let's get some playing done here, all right? So here is first degree. Um, for example, the tune, I Got Rhythm. Uh, A part, so I'm thinking here one six two five one one six two five and that two five to four. This is a note you have to nail right here. The F minor, every time you get to this point right here, to the the third line, the third set of four bars, right? Or the third phrase, some people call it that way. You gotta hear three phrases here, right? Or four phrases here for phrase one, two, three, and four. So on that phrase three, it starts on F minor. You really gotta find a way to bring that A flat note uh, as soon as possible and accent it. Uh, okay, so uh, let me demonstrate that uh, real quick. Um, so we got to the fourth degree. Four, uh, before I demonstrate, let me just finish it. Four sharp diminished. This here is an important guy you also really want to bring out. And after many years of playing this, what I, what I found out that was much easier is instead of playing E diminished, at least for me, I just think B diminished. The actual key the, because it's the same chord B diminished is the same as a D flat diminished which is the same as an E diminished or you could call it F flat diminished <laughs> but yeah it's the same thing so if you have a difficulty a difficulty thinking about this chord when it's time to play maybe you can think faster in B flat and then you can just resolve those notes the flat 5 resolves to the 5th the flat 3 resolves to the major 3rd of course the major seven is off to the one, and the six is just the six. All right. Okay. So continuing, let's let's do a little playing here. Uh, I'm I'm about practicing these things. So um, how about just running some some uh, very slow lines here? So this is something that uh, is always good to do. The B flat turning into a B do B natural to outline the G. There's a few different ways you can approach this. First, let's talk about outlining every chord. Later on, if you're going through faster beats, you can just think one, five, one, like right? It's just a, a way to boil it down to less thinking. But we can talk about that later uh, when we talk about faster tempos. For now, I just want to really outline this and make it clear for you guys. Uh, okay, so that line I just played, I'm using this B flat to be natural, which is very usual if you want to outline every chord, right? And then, of course, if I lead this to B natural, I'm going to have to lead it to C again. That B natural asks for the C. And then here, just the same old 2 5 little phrase, right? So uh, that's a good way to start. One, two, three, four. Whatever. So here, uh, on the th on the second on the second line, here's the first tip of the day. Very important tip. 
here, why don't you use a third degree, a phrygian, which is a relative to the one. It is a tonic function chord, and it shares a lot of the same notes with B flat, right? The D minor chord has the F natural, the D natural, and the A note, which all belong here to the B flat major seven. And then if you put the D minor here, you can put a D flat minor here leading to C minor, or it could be a D flat dominant, or it could be a D flat diminished. There's many ways to treat this guy, this bridging guy, but you go D, D flat, C. The D flat can be diminished, can be dominant, or it can be minor, like doing a chromatic movement, like such. <laughs> Yeah, one more time, another example. I'm, I'm talking about on the second line using the D minor, to D flat minor, to C minor. One, two, three, four. Ah, sorry. Again, two, three, four. So I did dominant. I used the D flat dominant this time, C minor. And now the 2-5 to 4. And here, the final phrase, another great tip I can give you is don't think so much of the chords. Just play a blues phrase here, and it always works. Every time you get to the uh, last phrase there, a little, a little blues, simple phrase, something like... Uh, <laughs> Something like that, whatever. Or or whatever, you know. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so let's let me play a little, a few more examples of this um, A section here, slowly. All right. So here we go. Now the B part starts on D, I didn't write it, but like I said, starts on um, the third degree dominant. Third degree is D, play the as a dominant, and then do that chain of dominance. Uh, I was thinking blues at the end there, yeah. Exactly, yeah. The blues works through all the, the whole thing, but I don't think you want to rely just on the blues, you know, every time you play this, because uh, it seems to get uh, sometimes... Uh, there's something missing, you know. I, I always like to carry that next level. Uh, when you're building the solo, there's a point when you want to uh, subdivide more, you know, and then you go away from the blues more into the bebop. And then you want to do as best you can to outline every chord. Um, but the blues works over everything, yeah, absolutely. Which, which is the best resort, actually, when, you are, when, you have a hard, when you're having a hard time. <laughs> I always think like, go to the blues is like my safety net, you know. So, okay. Maybe because I got the light here and I got the shirt on, I'm kind of hot in here. All right, um, one, one more time. You guys are welcome to practice uh, on your own there with me. I'm gonna hold a beat and uh, just play over very slowly from B flat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
Think about it. I'm playing E diminished here, B, B flat diminished, so it would be it would have been uh, uh That's the phrase I was looking for right there. I'm sorry guys. So I'm not sure if you're with me. I lost most of my listeners there <laughs> going off like that, but uh that's the idea guys of the uh rhythm changes here is just having fun over these chords here. Um so maybe I'll take a little slower. Um Thank you, bro. Thank you. That excites me that you're there holding on tight together. Let's do it again. Uh, be welcome to lift to, to, uh, to uh, solo along. This is something that's really cool to do when you're playing with a jazz friend, uh, another musician, is you don't always have to do like one backs up and one guy solos. You can actually solo together sometimes. And as long as you're sort of trying to listen as well to what the other musician is doing and trying to respond to it, you can always solo together, and many times if it's done, you know, correct, correctly according to the rhythm and the harmony, great little counterpoint lines will, will come up as these two lines, you know, weave together. It's very nice effect. Um, you can always use that in your gigs. When your buddy's soloing, start solo with him, soloing with him, but be, of course, very uh, nice about it. <laughs> you know, don't be stepping all over. But all right, so be welcome to play with me. Let's try it again. Uh, Rhythm changes slowly um, from the solo. One, a two, um, a two, three. Four.
take right <laughs> so guys let's talk about this uh, any questions about what's going on here do you guys follow the harmony uh, do you follow the idea behind this um, sometimes uh, you can hold a note like I just did through all the chords that kind of helps uh, like this you can hold the B flat note through pretty much every chord one six is the sharp nine and then through C minor is the seven and then through F it's the fourth then through D is the flat six, then it becomes actually a B flat with the bass on the third, like a first inversion B flat. And then here for the dominant D flat dominant is the 13th, and then the seventh again, and the fourth. And now I would call it the 11th again, or fourth of F minor for the two five. And then sharp 11 for E. And then the fifth of the fourth degree and the sharp 11 or flat 5 of the diminished so that's something that you can always uh, run to if you if you want to take a breath or if you are lacking ideas you can use these pedal tones and you can get some great effect from it uh, do you have any tips for double timelines yeah always man I love that subject I'm just trying to stay off of it so you guys don't think I'm too hysteric hysterical <laughs> But I love double timelines, man. Uh, I was just practicing them today, um, and I was thinking to say that a great tip is uh, grouping rhythms together. Like every when you're when you're doubling, when you're creating these lines, you must recognize bits and chunks and know exactly how much time they take in into a, a subdivided a sixteenth note stream of notes or a sixth bit or whatever. Uh, you gotta sort of think ahead uh, the duration of these chunks of phrases in order to then just put them as words, you know, rather than thinking note by note. So, uh, whenever we double lines there, think, I, well, for now, I'm thinking, trying to think for every chord, but the easiest way to go about this doubling lines, the easiest way is to boil down to last chords. So you could just be thinking about two measures of two and two measures of five. That's gonna get the sound out, you know, the correct harmony, uh, not as specific, but it gets you safe to, to the end of the phrase. So thinking about double timelines, man, like I said, think about words. For example, this here. Dum -ba -da -dum. That entirely to me is a word, and I and I'm I know it's gonna be. I know I'm gonna fall on the beat there. So I think about that just as one whole thing. I'm starting on the flat seven to the major seven, which is basically leading on to the note, and then from above to the from the ninth down to the one. Oh, actually, I go back to the seven to one. So so and then and then you can start building up word by word. could be one so here I took from the third and then play the six and the five so after I got to the chromatic here I go six and then the chromatic again that's an encapsulation right upper neighbor lower neighbor target and then I respond with the sec or the tonic and approached from up, from up, from above. So I got this. And it could answer that with a fifth. So. But, yeah. Yeah. That's a phrase. And then build, build uh, uh, your own solo like, like that. If, if you, that's a great exercise. If you keep practicing each one of these phrases that you build, and uh, you're going to be building a great repertoire, as long as they sound correct, you know, which I think this does. And then, um, and then now we get to the five. 
So the five could be. So what I did, approach the tonic from the flat seven, and then th third, and then six to the five. So, uh, see, right? And then approach the third from the fourth. And then encapsulation, four, two, sharp, two, three. So I got this. And then, how did I do the rest? Yeah, something like that. So, see, when I get to the third here, I go five, seven, two, one. Okay, I'm thinking all of this bass on the C shape, um, F major chord. But the C shape is. Right? So, I'm thinking this line. Endless. You could just keep creating line uh, a line over a chord forever, and that's actually a great way to practice to really get uh, deep within a chord. Just play that one chord and keep playing lines over it. Keep forcing yourself to play lines over it, like F. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of sucking at the moment. Uh, listening while driving. Imagine photography and design. Thank you, brother. Keep on listening. Drive safe. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm going to play some lines here, and then you guys are welcome to interact with me, but uh, that's what I'm in the mood for doing. Yeah, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna play over the tune, the Flintstones this time. Try to harmonize the Flintstones here. The Flintstones is a da 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 Right, so. Thank you. 
Flintstones is actually a great tune. Yes, it is, isn't it? Um, and that's it. The, the harmonization of this one is, is pretty easy. It starts on the fifth and then the tonic, which is done the sharp nine here on the sixth chord. And then two five. Something's wrong. on the ninth of the dominant chord you can play like this if you want or and then the one and then on the two five one like a see what's going on uh, and then the, the the it's pretty easy here it gets a D starting on the the fifth Tonic, and that's the flat 13. Oh, here could be the um, major six. Here's a little phrase I took the other day here um, for the one chord. If you want to finish when you're finishing a tune, this is a great phrase to do it. Um, there's two ways to do it. One is chromatically, like this. So you're always going, doing from the chromatic, chromatically above. But the coolest one is diatonically above, like this. So here is the upstroke, it's just an open string, open set of strings. It's a ghost note, it's the wrong note. You can also play this and then hammer on, so it takes less uh, uh, effort from your right hand. So. Jason, uh, love all your voicings. I'm always stuck on the same voicings and playing standards. Yeah, man, just try to keep exploring, you know? Try to keep exploring. Um, let's play a little more. Let's play, let's play audio. Let's play up, up tempo now. I'm going to play a little more up tempo. So let's see what happens. <laughs> when I play up tempo, sometimes I'll just stay in the major chord if it's too fast. But you guys know this tune, right?
sorry about that. <laughs> I ended up uh, screwing red at the end. But it was an honest take, though. Honest take, right? Uh, what have you guys to say? I remember I was once transcribing one uh, solo, uh, parts of it, from, uh, what's his name? Uh, great piano player. I uh, forgot his name. Brad Meldow. And he did this blues phrase. Um... <laughs> It's just very root, very uh, rooted blues, very simple uh, uh, tonic relate, tonic um, oriented phrase. It's always something nice that you can throw in this situation here too. Uh, to really boil it down to something simpler, you can forget all these chords and throw a blues phrase here, one here, and then a repetition of these blues phrases with just maybe a different ending. Because the blues always repeats too. You know, you have to, uh, like, like, like this one. Uh, It's kind of, that's bluesy, and you can work, uh, do that kind of stuff. Um, also, just play major, you know, play bebop major lines, like, like so, for example. Here's a start, approaching the third, the tonic, and then three-point encapsulation. Once I get here to the sixth, I'm, I use the G minor pentatonic. Right, so. That's kind of one of my, my paths, you know, that I use a lot on different parts of the beat, but I'll throw that line sometimes. And then I'll do 2-5. That's one. Closed. Next.
we got some comments here. Um, like one six five five seven blues progression. Uh, no, 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 no. When I say blues, I mean just the phrasing, not the progression. The progression is still the same, but the phrasing sometimes you can simplify by just using those minor thirds and blue note over this and make it simple. Like and then repeat. Stuff like that, you know, that's roots, roots blues, or delta blues, I should say. All right, hey, Filippo, guitar Silva, uh, nice to see you live, best wishes, thank you. Guess a color mic would be ideal. Oh, yeah, yeah, a lapel, right, you mean? When you're uh, writing on the board, whatever you lecture would be clearly audible. True, true that. All right, let's see how we're doing and what time here. Okay, a little more. Let's let's throw in a little, a few more lines here. Um, just keep on playing, man. Uh, here is uh, if I start. Try to always do this when you're gonna make lines. Try to practice just playing a chord voicing wherever you are in the board and based on that chord voicing is how you would have built your line but it's before you even build lines it's important to be able to find the chord there so let's play a, all chords here in the three first frets let's see what happens so I got B flat G7 C F7 B flat again G7 C minor F7 and then F minor B flat E flat, E flat major, E diminished, one, five, one, and then again one. Now I'm gonna move to this region here, um, thir between third and fifth fret. So I got one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, and then two, five to four. Here's four diminished. That's how you would make the lines, is by exploring these chords uh, as you see them. So if I'm here, I'm going to play a line, could be an arpeggio. And then the, the G. And then C. And then F. And then B flat. G. C minor. F dominant. And then F minor. B flat. E flat.
Jason. Thank you for that donation, brother. Um, any comments? Very nice. Thank you, Tyler. Tyler is in the area. What's up, brother Tyler? Uh, so, yeah, guys, that is Rhythm Changes. That is the dish of the day. Ney Sotero. Beleza, Felipe. Thanks to the show me a new world with your ideas. Thanks to show me. You, were, you are o cara, the man. <laughs> Obrigado, Neizão. Obrigado, Neizão. Vamos de novo, então, nessa, embarcar nesse Rhythm Changes, galera. Quem quiser me acompanhar aí, as, as mudanças estão aqui, ó. Os acordes, né? Si bemol, sol 7, dó menor, fá 7. Essa é a primeira, segunda e quarta frase. É só isso aqui, ó. Si bemol, sol 7, dó menor e fá 7. E aí, ali no terceira frase, você faz 2, 5, 1 pro quarto grau, ó. Fá menor, si dominante, que é o 5 do 4. Fá é mi bemol e termina com mi bemol diminuto. Esses são os acordes-chave que você precisa fazer. Você precisa fazer, ó, o acorde-chave aqui é Fá menor e o Mi diminuto. Se você tocar tudo, primeiro grau aqui, Si bemol, bebop, tudo em cima, dá certíssimo. O am I speak in português? Uh, if you play just B flat over all of this, you get it right. All you gotta do is make sure you outline the F minor and the E flat diminished because those guys hold notes that are outside of the key of B flat, which are very important to the form. It's so important to nail these notes, guys, because even to the people that play with you, they'll have a sense of security in knowing where you are. All right? Um, let, me pay, let me show you an example. Here's one of the notes. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about these notes, all right? So you can see the, 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 how important they are. F minor and E dominant, E, e natural for the E diminished. One, two, a one, two, three. See? That's F minor. All right, guys, I lost some of y'all there. Sorry about that. Something wrong on my phone. Uh, I had been playing for hours. <laughs> Thinking you guys were here with me. <laughs> and then I look up and, and it was like disconnected. Okay. Uh, questions, guys. Uh, any questions? Do you understand the form of rhythm changes? Do you kind of hear the sound of this? Of this uh, it's almost a language. It's almost a style in its own within jazz. You know, it's something that we all have to make sure we... Uh, we shed a little bit so that we are up the game. This is the essence of, of jazz music right here. You know, it fits the blues so well and bebop so well. Got to make sure you do it. So again, I was focusing on showing you guys the importance of those notes, right? The F minor and the E natural. F minor, I mean the A flat note, which outlines the F minor chord. All right. All right. So uh, here, here I go again. A flat for the F minor. to outline this diminished chord when you want to play it fast. Sometimes I like to take a break on just a diminished chord to make sure we get it good, you know? Here's a, something that I do over the diminished chord sometimes to practice. I do this pattern. Instead of just this, put a little half step in there. Like this. And then hit this arpeggio on every string. Always coming out of a diminished chord tone. 
next would be here from B flat and it would look like this. And next from the sixth. Next from the flat five. So that's the idea. So. Almost at the end of our meeting today here guys it's been a pleasure to share with you my practice time I hope I was able to share anything uh, useful Jason, I'm glad I was helpful to you, man. I'm glad I was helpful to you. <laughs> it's very nice to have someone to talk to <laughs> during the live here so I don't feel like I am alone. Sometimes we have a greater turnout, but what matters is that we are here and I have accomplished one more of these. That's the 42nd live. There's a lot of, a lot of lives, man. A lot of lives. Um, so I'll be catching you guys next week, same time, same place. Please support the channel by subscribing. Uh, tell me what you thought about that Michael Jackson um, take of mine from Human Nature. Recently recorded that tune last week, and uh, I would love to share it with you. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, share this material uh, with whoever you may, and I appreciate your support. Talk to you next week, guys. Bye-bye.